Rex Chapman, former Kentucky great NBA guard. Check out his uh, website, irex3.com. Follow him on Twitter at uh, Rex Chapman. Joins us now. How have you been, Rex? Oh, good. How's it going, DC? Good. Good. It's been a while. How's life? It's been good. Everything's good. No, it has been a while. I'm, I'm happy to be back on with you, though. Uh, I always enjoy it. Um, l- let me get through the business part of it, and then we'll talk about... Uh, All right. Now, uh, what you went... Can, where do we start here with, with what happened in, the, what, the last two years? With, with what, oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, well, I've, I've, for about 15 years, I, I, I dealt have dealt with a uh, uh, prescription painkiller addiction and on and off. And uh, I guess I finally rode myself off the rails enough that I needed to go to rehab and, and get it fixed. <laughs> so, but, if, um, but if you didn't I, get caught, but if you didn't get caught, like getting, uh-huh. getting caught, how did that, did it help? Uh, uh, you know, I would have preferred uh, to get help in a different way, but I think that sort of, propelled me to do to do so did you look at the video no never have <laughs> i never have um uh, there was an article written seth davis wrote an article a nice article uh, six months or so ago i never read that I had plenty of people telling me what it was about or you know how it came off and uh and whatnot but uh ah, dan i feel great i'm very happy happy to be happy to be alive <laughs> more than anything because i think i was headed down a but I, I was around path. you. I how many times was I around yeah. you? And I never, I, I, I didn't quite, know anything. Yeah, quite a bit. And I, I think that you know most of the people that really knew me knew how my my thinking was different, my behavior was different. But to I could I could sort of play it off and 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 manage. Uh, but you know I was just I was just. Uh, not, not doing my best, and and now I feel I feel great, and, and uh, looking forward to to what lies ahead. Did it start in the NBA? Yeah, it did. It was my my last three years uh, in the NBA, and you know I feel like I came by it honestly. I've never been a guy who partied or uh, went out too much, but um, you know it wasn't like I went out and and sought it. I had seven surgeries in my last four years and was just trying to continue to play and play at a high level and it was, uh, it was a poor, poor decision but it was kind of the culture also of, of the NBA at the time. So you just take painkillers to get you through a game? To, yeah I would uh, um, you know I had a had a couple of pretty bad injuries and uh, it was tough to come back from them but you know it's uh, I felt like I was being paid paid to do a job, and I, I needed to be out there doing it. Easy to get them? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, at, 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 especially that that uh, late in the '80s and '90s, and that was just kind of what you did. If you got hurt, you shot something up, you shot it up with Novocaine, and and you tried to play. And um, you know, I, I I wish I could go back and do it differently, but uh, you know. You, you make those decisions and and you live with them. But you learn about yourself whether you want to or not, yeah. right? No question, no question. You got to be uh, pretty introspective. You got to do some uh, stuff that uh, you know sort through some things that's not fun emotionally and and uh, try to be better. But you know, again, I, I wish it all hadn't happened, but it did, and uh, I feel like uh, you know I, I feel like I'm. Uh, I'm doing well. What do you want to do now? You know, I don't know. I think I'm going to try to do some t- uh, continue to do some TV and radio stuff. Um, may uh, talk with some teams after the season about doing some stuff back in the league, uh, in and around the NBA. But uh, I'm just kind of trying to do what's right now and and continue to push forward, working out kids here in the LA area, uh, basketball, and and trying to stay busy. Have you talked to the NBA about talking at uh, Rookie Symposium? I have, uh, and I'm going to do some speaking. I don't know exactly when, but I'm going to start doing some of that this summer, and I wouldn't mind going around to a lot of the teams, or all the teams, and uh, you know, talking to them about you know, the dangers of, of prescription pain medication. And it's, 
you know, it's not just in sports, it's everywhere. Every walk of life is, is kind of fighting through this uh, opiate epidemic that we've got going on in this country. If you want to get in touch with Rex, his website is irex3, his number uh, in the NBA, dot com. Follow him on Twitter at uh, rexchapman.com. You played two years at Kentucky, right? I did. If, if it was a one and done, would you have been one and done? You know, I don't think so. I, I was, you know, I, people ask me about that quite a bit, and uh, especially with all the guys coming in so young anymore. I was the youngest player in the league in 88, and Kareem was the oldest at 41, but I was 20. Um, you know, we got guys now that are, you know, 19 and played one year of college. I don't think, no, I, don't, I wasn't ready uh, physically at that point. A year later, I was ready. I, you know, gained some weight, put on some good weight, and, and could handle it better. But uh, after my first year, it would have been a disaster, I think. Uh, we're up against uh, the break at the top of the hour. Uh, can, yeah. can we bring you back uh, at the top of next hour and talk a little bit about the uh, tournament here? Whatever you like. Oh, great. Of All right, we'll continue with Rex Chapman, former Kentucky star, played in the NBA. And, uh, yeah, I know he went through a rough patch there. And, uh, you know, got arrested for shoplifting, and then I think they found out that he had uh, you know, an addiction there. But also, I, I'd been around him quite a few times, and if he was using, I had no idea. No idea. But then we were around Ryan Leaf, too, and I had no idea that, you know, he was using. No idea. But, you know, when you get to a certain level, you have to be really good at doing it to get away with it. But I'm glad that Rex... No, I know it's painful, but it's. I have to ask those questions because I'm curious about it and the comeback. And he's going to be asked those questions by NBA teams or college teams or people who employ him. And uh, I appreciate him answering those questions. Uh, how would you assess Steph Curry's game with the the era that you played in? We we get we get into this comparison here of how would Steph Curry do back when you could put your hands on somebody? How would he do back when you played? Uh, he would do great. He would, he, <laughs> Steph would have figured it out. Steph was born my rookie year, and, and Dell and I, you know, were teammates then. So uh, I, I, I watched Steph and grow up, babysat him, and um, he, he was just, he was always such, just such a great kid. But he would do, he would do what he's not, maybe not what he's doing now. I mean, you could hold and grab. You remember that, Dan. You could hold, grab. Uh, uh, keep a guy in front of you basically with your hands, and it would be so hard to. Do. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a, It wasn't real easy defensively at any time, but today it's almost impossible. You can't touch anybody. Wait, uh, you were babysitting. I, you were babysitting Steph Curry. We we uh, Dell and Sonya and Stefan lived two doors down from me, so they'd bring him over and leave him with me <laughs> a night a week and. Uh, uh, Steph and I would just hang out. He, 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 he looks just like he did, does now, back then <laughs> as a two, three, four-year-old. No wonder he's a gunner. He hung out with you. Uh, me and his dad and every other gunner. Uh, you know, so it's, it's good stuff. I was, I, this couldn't happen to a better family or a better kid. Uh, Steph's just terrific. And his dad was one of the great shooters of all time, but he was he was un, not like Steph. He was not off the dribble. It was just in that in the corner, he would just yep. like tippy toe jumper and he was just he killed it. Dell uh, taught one of the top two or three shooters I ever played with. Uh he he just an effortless stroke that Stefan got and then Stefan got some quickness genes from his mom. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but uh, it's a it's a fun it's a great family and it's just been phenomenal to watch uh, Steph and Dell and I text message every day about what's going on with the Warriors with Steph and then with Seth um, in Sacramento. But uh, it sure has been fun to watch. Well, and we got caught up in let's bring in all the old time guys Walt Frazier and Oscar Robertson and Isaiah. And yeah, let's talk about what your era was like as a and I said you can't compare the two. It's just impossible because no. I have to put Jordan in today's NBA where you oh. – imagine if Mike played today and I can't I, put my I hands tell, on him. Yeah. I tell people that all the time. A big, a big night for Michael at the line was if he got to the line 
you know, nine or ten times. Um, we got guys going to the line 20 times a yeah. game now. And, uh, Mike, you know, the, the beating that Michael took, uh, he would shoot 25, 30 free throws every night in this league. What's your favorite Jordan story? Oh, gosh. Uh, no, we were playing, uh, we were playing them, uh, in Chicago. I was with Charlotte. We were playing them and, uh, we had a couple nights in Chicago and, uh, Michael's agent was my agent, David Falk. And I'd known Michael. He called me to go to Carolina way back when, um, Oh, well, Mike, Mike first... recruited you to Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. so, so we went to play, we went to bowl one night, went bowling in Chicago, but, uh, we were playing a couple nights later and, you know, occasionally the ball, a ball will get stuck down and the pins won't reset. Right. You got to throw another ball down there to reset the pins. And, uh, Michael noticed that the pins were stuck and he reached over and he picked up a 15 pound ball just with one hand, just like it was a grapefruit and chucked it down the lane. I thought this is a guy palming a palming <laughs> a big bowling ball <laughs> like it was nothing and you know michael loved him to death but boy he could play you i mean uh, he had those big old hands and every time you shook hands with him you're like damn this guy <laughs> not only great he's got all the physical attributes as well who was the so, second uh, best guy that you played against oh gosh uh joe dumars was awfully good Mm. Awfully good. Mm. Uh, solid. Both ends of the court could guard you. And uh, a great guy. But uh, I'd have to put Joe there. Clyde Drexler was awfully good. Um, you know, we had a lot of... It was a, it was a tough uh, era uh, to try to be a two-guard in the NBA and be elite when you were playing in the East and you got Michael Jordan there every year. <laughs> But how surprised were these guys when you came in and your jumping ability? Oh, gosh. I, you know, I, I guess, you know, guys, all, I always said, I always had a, uh, people always said, you know, he plays like a black guy. And I always thought, I, I can't believe people are allowed to say that with everything that you're not allowed to say now. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I it seemed like uh, – uh, it served me very well. The athleticism that enabled me to, to be able to hang hang around in the league for a few years while I figured out exactly what was going on. But you would you be labeled sneaky athletic now? Because now now we have code words like uh, you know yeah. surprising uh, uh, jumping ability, deceptive jumping ability. I mean, you had yeah, a what a forty know. inch vertical jump. Yeah, so I don't know if it was sneaky. <laughs> no, it's not. But but we sort of disguise it that way. These cliches. If a white guy has athleticism, yeah. then he's deceptively athletic. I don't know if you would have been deceptively athletic. Right. It's just like uh, you never, you rarely hear any black black athletes uh, called. Uh, well, they've got moxie. That's always a white guy, right? Yeah. Gritty, gutty. <laughs> right. You know, the black right. guy. The, the black guy doesn't hustle. He's just a great. He's a great athlete. Right. Or he didn't work hard. Uh, yeah, it, right. Didn't work at it. Yeah, yeah. you know exactly. who I love, and I know I know you. Uh, you know the Kentucky program, Tyler Eulis. I don't know if he can play in the pros, but I I I have not seen a point guard who is the embodiment of what you would right. want on the floor in a long time. And I, I know I'm doing a disservice to other point guards, but man, I love watching this kid play. No, he's fantastic. You're right, and and yes, he'll he'll play in the NBA. He'll be a first round pick when it's all said and done. Um. He just plays the game with so much character and integrity. Gets wherever he wants to go. You remember Mugsy, right? Yeah. I know you do. Muggs was terrific. He really was. People you know, people who played against Muggs really, really get it. And especially we you played with him. He was brilliant. At five and Tyler three. Uless, at five three. Yeah. And Tyler Euless is like Muggs, only he's a better scorer. And uh, he's just about winning. Uh, I, I, I hope that the, the league doesn't let Tyler Ewitt slip to, you know, the Warriors or the Spurs because uh, that'd be <laughs> dangerous for the rest of the league. He's really good. He's really good. And so is his backcourt mate, Jamal Murray. Who do you got winning at all? Uh, gosh, I want to pick my cats, but I've got Virginia. I've Virginia. got Virginia winning at all. 
Yeah, I like them. The only thing I don't like is that they struggle to score at times. Malcolm Brogdon is fantastic. Yeah, he's great. fantastic, but he's really a pass first guy. So that's my only thing. The other guy to watch. I can't believe these mock drafts. They've got this guy ranked, you know, in the second round. DeAndre Bembry at St. Joe's. He's really good. He'll be a he'll be a first round pick. Also, really good. Hey, it's great to catch up with you. Uh, maybe we'll uh, cross paths when we come back to Los Angeles in May. Absolutely. Love I'd love to. Do to. It. Always fun coming on with you. Thanks, right. Dan. Great, great to hear your day. voice. Thank you, Rex. That's uh, Rex Chapman, former Kentucky guard.